we on? <laughs> no, we're not in the subway. We're in my new place. Hey, this is Harold Everton with the Everton Media YouTube channel and the Everton Media Network. In this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing, assembly, and review of this item right behind me here in this box. This is the Race Tag 61 Studio Desk from a company called Basil. They do most of their business and operations from Reverb.com. Now, part of the reason why I purchased this specific desk is because in my new place, an interesting fact about this place is that it was built in 1857, and as a result, as you would imagine, most of the rooms are of a very modest size. Now, the room that I chose to put my studio in, get this, the smallest of the rooms, most of them average at 12 by 12, 12 by 13. This room, though, is 8, 9 by 8, 4. Yes, that tiny. To add insult to injury, the doorway for most spaces in this home, clocks in at about 29 inches. Let's prove this fact. I just want my cam camera around. Boom, 29 inches, 29 inches. So after doing tons of research, most studio desks clock in at about 31 inches in depth. And the one in my old place was about 31 inches. And for this room, put it this way. If the desk is too wide, where you assemble it is where it's gonna stay. And in my case, since I'm doing a lot of things here, painting, moving things around, while your desk isn't portable, it's not something you bring in the subway, you know what I'm saying? You still wanna be able to move your desk from room to room. Now, this one comes with a keyboard tray, which pulls out. The depth is 23.5 inches, and with the keyboard tray out all the way, it's about 28, which is perfect for that space. And if I do decide to move my studio elsewhere, it won't be that tough to do. I won't have to disassemble the desk. Guys, thanks for sticking around this long. Do stick around in this video. I'm gonna do an unboxing. I'm gonna do the assembly of the desk, and of course, I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts. Now, stick around while I take this 78.5 pound box up these stairs, dolo. That means um, by myself. Stick around. <laughs> now, I did foolishly say that I was gonna bring this up the stairs, right? By myself. Wish me luck. Not recommended. Don't do this at home, ladies and gentlemen. Even though I am at home. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I highly recommend that you do not attempt to do what I just did with this box and those stairs. I don't know what exactly is going through the old noggin. Please do not do that, even in the comfort of your own home. With that said, let's take the stuff out of this box and start putting it together. All right, now, I'm in the actual room, and I did tell you before this room was super tiny, super small. It's 8'9 by 8'4. Now, in a scenario like this one, every single inch, every millimeter counts. Now, when this desk is fully assembled, it's going to be 46 inches wide. That's going to bring me to about there. Uh, it's going to be about 31 inches tall, which is, you can't see that, but about here. And depth-wise, it's going to be 23.5 inches. This was the primary motivation behind me purchasing this desk. And in a tiny room like this one, 23.5 inches is about here. It gives me all of this space in this almost 9x9 nine nine room. So, again... Every inch counts. You make your own joke. Let's get this desk put together. All right, we can see that everything is nicely and neatly packed. I'm super confident about that. Kudos to the big boys over there at Basil for packing this stuff so well. Let's start taking the stuff out. All right, this right here would be the instructions. You don't get step-by-step -step directions like you would from like, say, Ikea, but you do get a picture of what the finished product would look like. You get a list of all of the items that come with the, or in the box, and you have um, this list of directions here. Now, I'm confident. I put together enough studio desks in my day, all right? I'm confident that with these directions, I should not have that tough of a time putting this together. We can only hope. This is one of the legs. Take a look at this logo right here. The parts are definitely heavy. All right, the cool thing is that the um, parts are actually labeled. I don't know if you can see this here. It says uh, rack side panel, and it says uh, side up. See that right there? And the directions actually start with install the rack rails on the rack side panels using the 3 4 Phillips screws. So this is it. Let's get to work. These would be the rack side panels. Even the bags are nicely labeled. Screws for side rails, screws to attach to rack rails, and bolt connectors. And lovely Ziploc bags, mind you. Before I do this, I also want to point out that on the Reverb site where you can find the Basil products, uh, every single listing has a 3D picture, so you can actually check your work against the multiple angles uh, that those 3D pictures provide. Just a thought. 
this will be step one, the rack side panels. You can see that here. And it also tells you right here, uh, that's the side up. When you check them against the, when you check these against the 3D pictures, uh, the back of it is in this direction. Step two, attach the rack side panels to the top using the bolt connectors. And that is the top A. Uh, you can see here, A would be this right here. What I took out just now is actually the keyboard shelf, so I'm gonna take this and put it aside. This here is the rear panel. Rack top, here we go. This step's gonna require using the uh, one of the 22 bolt connectors. And uh, as you can see here, um, an Allen key's provided inside of the Ziploc bag, so let's get to work. I did this backwards. This is actually supposed to be step three, but I'm halfway there anyway because this is done. So that's like the top, and then you have to actually get it to the tabletop. So that's gonna be next. This big thing here is where I should have started. This is actually the tabletop. So the the uh, portion where the um, the rack mount equipment goes to is gonna attach to this. Thankfully, we can still get it done. Steps one, two, and three have now been completed. Uh, just to go over that, I have the, uh, the, ra the rack rails and the rack side panels. Those are done. This is on the other side of this. You have the, the top for the rack and the bottom for the rack. So I did it backwards, but luckily everything worked out. Everything's lined up and ready to go. This is not light. This is pretty heavy, just so you know. So even when it's time to move this object from room to room, which was my initial plan, in case I had to be in that situation, um, it would not be the easiest feat. All right, next on the instructions, I have to install the side rails on the side panels. That's what's gonna allow the keyboard tray to slide in and out. But I'm gonna do a quick adjustment that is not in the instructions. These things are attached to the bottom of the side panel so you can slide it across the floor, but I have laminate flooring. So I'm gonna install these uh, felt pads on top of these just so I can slide it across the floor if I need to. And these fit on nicely. They're almost the exact size. So I'm going to do these one at a time. I have the felt pads on now, and now I'm going to turn this around and install the slide rails. So this is what they look like. Obviously, there are two of them, and you can install them at different heights. If I turn this around now, you can see that you have uh, several uh, holes here on the inside. Here we go. You can either put them here, here or here, depending on your keyboard height. I'm gonna go for the middle one just because I wanna have that flexibility in case I do change the keyboard that I have. Right now I'm working with a um, Nectar Panorama T6, which is about three inches in height. So this would be about five and a half inches in the middle. This would be about four and this would be close to six, depending on what you have. So let's go. Now I'm at the portion where I have to attach the rear panel to the two side panels. This might be where having two people might be a better deal. But in any case, it says not to over tighten the bolts. So I'm going to take this rear panel and I'm going to fix it to both of the side panels. So take a look. All right, folks, the back is done. Now I have to um, continue on with the directions. Uh, mind you, it says not to over tighten the screws and I made sure that I didn't do that, but it did require some play because um, when I put one side in, the, other, the screws on the other side weren't quite um, touching the, the panels. So I had to um, loosen them a bit and push it in and then tighten it again. So let's move on to the next step. And, and there you have it. I did it. I put it together. I would say that it took about two hours, uh, more or less, give or take. Um, just consider that I had to stop and you know pause the camera, turn it on again to give you guys the perfect angles, in my opinion, so you guys could see exactly what it was that I was doing here. And I'm not just doing this myself. Wait a second, I didn't finish yet. There's the keyboard shelf. 
Nice. Done so. <laughs> How can I forget the most important portion of the video? The part of the video where I discuss the entire desk completely assembled, the review portion of the video. I almost cut the video short. Let's talk about this desk. I love the appearance. The build quality is strong. Uh, though everything is screwed in place, it's not that rickety. To the touch, it feels vinyl-esque. I did bring that up earlier in the video. It's not made of that, obviously. Uh, but it does feel that way. So I would imagine that if I inadvertently scratched this object, this piece of furniture, the result would not be great on the eyes. So keep stuff like that in mind. Some of the pluses, again, I said in the beginning of this video, this was built for compact spaces. It had compact spaces in mind, and this is a very small room that I'm in. So it being 46 inches wide and 23 inches deep, I did show you um, in the process of putting this together that I have a lot of space still left in the room. And the keyboard desk slides out easily. And of course, if you're not using the keyboard, if you're doing editing and stuff like that, well, you have this space here and you can pull into your desk. Let's talk about some of the things that I thought were not so great about this unit. Now, in my old Middle Atlantic desk, which was kind of built like this, except it didn't have the panels on the side, it had legs, there was some clearance space in between the top and the bottom portions of the rack. So if you wanted to slide some wires in, you could do that. In my case, I'm using an Apple wired keyboard. There is absolutely no space, buddy you're not gonna be able to get your wires in there. So if you have a keyboard like this, you're gonna to have to swing the wire around on one of the sides here. Um, but of course, in this day and age, uh, the, wire, the wireless keyboards are not that much money, so at some point I'm gonna to upgrade to a wireless keyboard anyway, so that's just a little nitpicking. It's not a big deal. Uh, next thing, um, likewise with the space here, there's no clearance, I mentioned that. This shelf here is not that deep. It's about nine inches, I did measure this. So if you have rack gear, and I plan on getting an Integra 7 from Roland, it's 11 inches deep. It's not gonna sit flush with the shelf and you're gonna have to bring your desk out just a little bit. Now, at the moment, I don't have that right now, so I'm using this as a space to park my wired keyboard. So, um, that being said, I have a couple of Yamaha monitors here, the five inch versions, the um, NS5s. And uh, you can see that it sits nice and flush on the shelf. Uh, without uh, much space on all sides, but I've had larger monitors, this might be a problem. Likewise, because it's so compact, I think I probably could get away with having a 24 inch mon sorry, a 28 inch monitor here. This is a 21 inch older Samsung HD monitor. I am gonna upgrade soon, but if you're one of those guys who needs a 32 inch monitor to work with, uh, you're not gonna be able to have your monitors on this shelf. You're gonna have to have external, uh, standalone uh, monitor stands. So, guys, I gotta say, for what it is, and for my needs, not your needs, my needs, I am very happy with this desk. If I decide to move this desk to a different room, and I'll be able to because it's not that wide, it's not that deep the depth, um, I can move this with ease, and of course, I could get monitor stands or just have it wherever it is that I wanna have it in. So, guys, I hope this was a helpful video. Uh, there are no videos about this desk on YouTube right now, so I wanted to make one. Uh, and I, like I said, I'm very happy with this purchase. Keep in mind, this desk, if I'm not mistaken, was $589. I'm in New York State, so add tax, add shipping. The shipping was $98. Bucks. You're spending close to $800 on this desk. It's something to keep in mind. By contrast, the Middle Atlantic desk that I used to have was $749. And I like the appearance of this more and it fits my needs at this current moment much more. All right, so if you're looking for a huge workspace, this is not the desk for you. They do make larger studio desks and there are other solutions that you can take advantage of. But if you wanna fit everything nice, uh, in a nice compact area, look how clean my racks look, et cetera, et cetera, then this wet might be up your alley. Guys, this is Hyrule Everton for Everton Media. This is the Everton Media YouTube channel. Do check out my Fiverr page and uh, check out my voiceovers, jingles, et cetera, et cetera. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Hey, this is Harold Everton for Everton Media. Thanks for checking out this video. By the way, please do be kind and click that subscribe button for access to news, music, new content, commentary, tech, and if you're lucky, you might even get a video or two in color. By the way, if you're looking to promote your product, service, or business with unparalleled energy, do check me out on Fiverr.com. I am a top-rated seller there.